Let's take a look at quadratic functions. So you've seen some other functions before. Maybe you've seen or remember these kind of functions, y equals mx plus b. So for example, maybe y equals 2x plus 3. These are what we called linear functions. Linear functions because if you graph them, these things ended up being straight lines, like this, or maybe it was a vertical line, or maybe it was a, a horizontal line. But linear functions always had y equals mx plus b as their basic shape. The exponent on the x was a 1. So what makes a quadratic function is when we add an x squared. So we take x and raise it to the power of 2. And maybe there's some number in front of the x squared that we'll call a. And maybe there's an x term with the number in front of it b. And maybe there's a constant term without an x that we could call c. But basically, if you've got a y equals x squared graph, these are what we call a quadratic function. So quadratic functions are y equals x squared functions. And their shape's a little bit different. They look like this. They're kind of U-shaped graphs, although they could be upside down. They could have all kinds of different shape. They could be quite wide, or they could be very, very, very skinny. So these are all quadratic functions. And we call this basic shape, this basic U-shape, we call that shape a parabola. So if linear functions make lines, then quadratic functions make a shape that we call a parab parabola. Sometimes we call these um, parabola functions, but usually we call them quadratic functions. So let's look at the parabola. y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is our quadratic function because it's an x squared graph. And let's take a look at what does a and b and c so these are the numbers, the coefficients in front of each of these variables. One example of a quadratic function might be this. 2x squared minus 3x plus 5. So we're talking about a being the number in front of x squared. What does that do to the parabola function? So the a, this coefficient in front of x squared, it controls the direction of the opening. So we know if a is greater than 0, if that number is greater than 0, the graph is going to open up and there will be a minimum value. So let's just draw a graph here of what that might look like. So a is greater than 0, that means this parabola is going to open up. So it might look something like this. This would be a greater than 0. So if this, it opens up, so this parabola is opening up, and that means that there will be a minimum value. This point right here, this low point, is our minimum value. We call this point the vertex. So the vertex is this bottom part of our U-shaped graphs. Remember we had all these examples here. Here would be the vertex, here would be the vertex, here would be the vertex, and here would be the vertex. And now we could look at these and we could say that whatever this graph looked like, we would know that a is greater than 0. And here's another one where a would be greater than 0, and a would be greater than 0, because these graphs are all opening up. This graph is opening down, so the coefficient of x squared, a, must be less than 0. And that's what we're talking about here now. If a is less than 0, the graph opens down, and there will be a maximum value. So here we have our graph. A is less than 0 because this graph is opening down, and there would be a maximum value to this function. There's a high point. The vertex would represent the maximum value of this function. The number b, that's the coefficient in front of x now, it controls the location of the axis of symmetry. So let's talk about what that is. Let's get another graph in here. 
So let's say we had a graph that looks something like this. And let's say this is the vertex right here. And I'm just going to make some numbers up here. Let's say this is at the point 2, 1. So that's this location of the vertex right here. The axis of symmetry is this line that goes right down the middle of the graph. So the axis of, the, of symmetry is the line that divides this parabola into two equal halves. So this half here is a complete mirror image of this half over here. So the axis of symmetry is the line that goes right down the middle of the graph. And if we want to find the equation of these lines, they're always x equals, in this case, the x value is 2. So every point on this line, the axis of symmetry, this vertical axis of symmetry, has an x value of 2. x is always 2. The y values are changing. Up here, the y values might be 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. So y is changing, but x is always 2. So the equation of the axis of symmetry will always be x equals, and then it'll just be the x-coordinate of the vertex, whatever that might be. So we, we can't tell. Like looking at this one, we can say that this graph definitely opens up. Looking at this, we can't really tell where the axis of symmetry is by looking at the equation. We'd have to get a graph of it first. Um, but just so you know, changing this coefficient is going to affect where this axis of symmetry is located. And then, and that's really all we need to know um, at this point. And then looking at what C does, quite simply C, this number at the end, is the y-intercept. Because if we look at, say, this example here, I don't know quite what this graph looks like, but I know that it'll open up, and 5 will be where this graph crosses the y-axis. So this is our x-axis here, this is the y-axis. This number right here is going to be our y-intercept because we know that for a y-intercept, x must be 0. The x value of any y-intercept is 0. And look at what happens if we take this equation and put 0 in for x. Check that out. We get 2 times 0 squared, which is 0, minus 3 times 0, which is 0. 0 minus 0 plus 5 is 5. So you can see this number at the end must be our y-intercept because putting 0 in for x would simply wipe all those out. And so the number c at the end is our y-intercept. So those are what a, b, and c can tell us uh, about our parabola. Okay, let's uh, look at this graph here. So I've got a parabola drawn. And let's say we've got to find out what the vertex is, what direction it opens, the axis of symmetry, the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, the domain, and the range. Let's get all the properties of this graph here. So the vertex, remember that's this point right here at the top. So in this case this would be a maximum. And the x value is negative 3, and the y value be 1, 2, 3, 4. So it looks like that my vertex there is the point negative 3, 4, and it's a maximum. It's the high point. Uh, it opens down. So putting down um, the axis of symmetry, so that would be that would be this line right down the middle, so that's x equals minus 3. Those are our x values, so this would be the equation of this line down here, x equals minus 3. It's the equation of the axis of symmetry. We need some x-intercepts, so here's one at negative 1, and here's one at 2, 3, 4, 5. So the x-intercepts are at negative 1 and negative 5. There's a y-intercept, it's also negative, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's at negative 5. So y equals negative 5 is our x, or our y-intercept. And then the domain, so that remember the domain is how far left and right this goes. Well, it's going to be all real numbers, because it continues to go to the left forever, and continues to go for 
to the right forever. And indeed, all parabolas will always have domains of all real numbers, because these shapes here always go gradually to the left forever and gradually to the right forever, regardless of if they open up or down. So always the domain will be all real numbers. The range is going to depend. So in our case, we have a maximum. So in this case, it's going to be y values that are less than or equal to 4. This is as high as our graph goes, is right here at 4. Um, but we can go down, down forever. Sometimes, like this one, let's say this point was the point 2, 3. Here we would say the range is y greater than or equal to 3, because we have a low point of 3. y is 3, but it goes up forever, so y is bigger than or equal to 3. But in our case it goes down, it opens down, so y would be less than or equal to 4. Let's look at another example. So let's say we've got a graph, this function, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3, and then we can come up with all its properties like the axis of symmetry and, and the intercepts and so on. But let's say we've got to graph this function. How do, we do, how do we do that? How do we graph a quadratic function? Well, there's a few ways we can do it. One way is we could always do a table of values. So we could, we could pick some values for x and substitute them in here and get some y values. So let's, let's do that. Let's, um, let's pick negative uh, 5, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, 3, Let's just see what we get when we do these ones. So negative 5. If I put negative 5 in for x, negative 5 squared would be 25. 25, so that would be that, negative 5 squared. Uh, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10, minus 3. So putting negative 5 into here, and you could do this with a calculator. Uh, it looks like I'm getting uh, 10 there. Hold on, nope. 25 minus 10 is 15. 15 minus 3 is 12. So y value of 12. Now we'd substitute negative 3 in here. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. 9 minus 6 minus 3. I'm getting 0. Now I'm going to put negative 1 in. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 2 minus 3 would be negative 4. And then I put 0 in, and I get negative 3. And then I put 1 in, and I'm going to get 0. And I put 3 in, and I get 9 plus 6 minus 3 is 15 minus 3, which is 12. So now what I could do is I could plot these points on a graph. Because what I have is a series of points here. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I'd have to go up to 12, which if I go up by 1s, this is going to be off my scale here. So I'm not going to plot this point, it's, it's too big. But I'll go negative 3, 0, I'll put that point on there. I'll go negative 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll go 0, minus 3, I'll go 1, 0, and I'll go whoop, 3, 12 again. 12 is too big. So what I might want to decide to do, now that I can kind of see, knowing that it's got to be a parabola shape, what I might want, whoops, I did, did I do this wrong? No, 3. So what I might want to do is I might want to try some of these points that are missing here. Like maybe I'll try negative 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 5 was too big. But let's try negative 4, and then we have this point that's missing, so why don't we try negative 2, and then I'll try positive 2. And that'll just fill in some more points on my graph here. Oops. So putting negative 4 in here, that would be 16, when I square a negative times a negative, positive 16, minus 8 minus 3 would be 5. So this has a y value of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I wanted to pick negative 2, so putting negative 2 in here, negative 2 squared is positive 4, negative 2 times positive 2 is negative 4, so this is going to be minus 3. 
and then you can probably start to see the symmetry here um, because remember this thing is symmetrical so this has got to be our low point so because this point was left one up one this was left one up one or sorry right one up one here if I go left two I'm up four so I better go right two and up four so instead of even putting this value in for two we know that it's going to be right up here because this graph must be symmetrical about the vertex. So over one, right one, left two, right two, left three, right three. So the graph's going to look like this using my table of values. And now I can answer all these, these questions. I know the x-intercepts are 1 and negative 1, 2, 3. I know what the y-intercept is. It's negative 3. I know what the vertex is. It's negative 1 down 1, 2, 3, 4, so negative 4. So that means the axis of symmetry is x equals minus 1. That's that line right there. What else do we need? Domain, maybe? All real numbers. Goes to the left forever, goes to the right forever. And the range would be y values that are greater than or equal to negative 4. That's as slow as we go. So that's how we can graph uh, parabolas using table of values. The other way that we could do this is to get a graphing calculator out. And simply enter the equation in. So if I go down to graph and I enter the equation y equals x squared plus 2x minus 3. Uh, so I've entered it in there. Now I just hit F6 for drawing it. This will give me a picture of the graph as well. Now I might I want to see that vertex down there so I've got to play with the view window a bit. I need to go down down more on my y-axis. So my x minimum and maximum were fine, but I gotta go lower than minus 3.1. So maybe I'll go minus five. Let's see what that looks. There we go. Now I can see, see the graph. And now under F5, G solve or graph solve, a bunch of window options come up here. So roots would be our x-intercepts. So if I hit F1, it's going to find one of our x-intercepts, which was minus 3. That was this one, minus 1, 2, 3. And then if I hit the right arrow button here, boom, it takes me to my next one, which is 1. What else can we find under G solve? Uh, maximum. This doesn't have a maximum, but if I want to find the vertex, I'll just hit F3, which is the minimum. Boom, there's the vertex. Negative 1, negative 4. Negative 1, negative 4. So that's how we can find vertexes, just either the minimum, or if it's an upside down one, and if it opens down, then we'll just hit the maximum, and it'll find the maximum. Uh, what else we need? The y-intercept, so F4. There's the y-intercept, minus 3. Notice that x is always 0 for y-intercepts. So we can get this information from our graphing calculator as well. So there's two ways we can come up with the properties of quadratics. One is by using a table of values and plotting some points and basically connecting the dots, knowing that it's got to be this symmetrical, smooth curve. Or we can enter it in the graphing calculator, play around with the view window so that we can see the whole graph, the important parts of the graph anyway here. And then G-Solve will bring up some of the things that we're interested in finding.